We're good. Let's go. We gave it. Okay, we're back. We got an iron. We got an, another iron coming. Look what at we it. Got? <laughs> <laughs> got an iron. Is doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> So that's the second one we've tried to get to work. But now we got this new one. Now this is a newfangled thing. It's a steam unit. We're not going to use the steam. We, you could use the steam. Nothing says. But uh, I'm for this silicone mat, I'm not going to use the steam. We just plugged it in and see how it's blinking. As soon as it gets done blinking, it'll be ready. But this is what it is. Or do we still have the special going on? It goes, well, I have... I have one left. She has one left, and what the special was is if you buy one of these, you get one of these mats for free. Now, I'm telling you, I, I sew with my mat. I took it to retreat with me. I'm not pressing without my mat. That's just all there is to it. So, okay. Come on, little iron. It may take it a minute to get it's the little. Here. It's the little engine that could. Well, it's never even been on yet. There she goes. She's on. Alrighty. Right. Now, here we go. We're going to lay her right down. What we're going to do is we're just going to pull this along. It is a slick trick, man. And so you just keep with this hand over here, you just keep uh, the edges even. I love that. And it is just so awesome because now look. You know, with just pulling it through. Isn't that awesome how that works? Otherwise, I'd be going like this, you know, and trying to keep it and see how long that would take me. But look at how slick this is. This is just 10 times faster as we send this through. Look at that. That's a whiz. All this binding. And you can see how stretchy it is. But it doesn't seem to stretch when you're pulling it under, or is it? Or is it stretching? Yeah, back? I can feel it. I can feel it stretching, but you're pressing it so it, it'll. It'll stretch back. It'll it'll go back into place. Yeah. Things don't stretch back. I'm just uh, today. I'm loving is, those polka dots on that. Aren't binding. they fun? That is fun. And this is just a nice, rich turkey red color. Um, and I made extra binding because I've got some extra little quilts that I think this binding will look good on. Look at how fast this is going. Yeah, it takes a while just to press, but not with this setup. Right. And the iron just sits there because the silicone uh, is heat resistant. It's like those that you put in the oven mm -hmm. and bake your stuff in. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Have you? No. Baked with silicone? I haven't. I um, have one of those... Uh, what are those mats that people would cook on? I have one of those. You They're do? like silicone fiberglass. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I, don't I haven't cook cooked much. necessarily cooked with silicone. I don't cook much. I have a silicone utensil. Yeah. Those Pampered Chef utensils. Oh, yeah. Love them. Wouldn't be without them. Mm -hmm. Love them. I think they have some like cupcake, silicone cupcake things that you can bake cupcakes in. I have a silicone ice cube tray. I love that. Oh thing. really? Oh, yeah. I it's bet for that making it's nice. for making oversized ice cubes. So Ooh. they're like jumbo ice cubes, and they don't melt because yeah. they're so big. Love them. Well, they gotta melt. I mean, eventually they'll melt, but for heaven's sake. But I mean, it takes forever, especially oh, I make if you them put jumbo it, and they don't melt. Well, actually, they don't. If I put it in a double wall stainless steel container, uh -huh. um, like a tumbler that's double uh -huh. wall, double insulated, they won't melt. That's they'll stay nice. in there for forty eight hours. And my iced tea is ice tea. Tea. Because it's got ice it's got and it's the, got tea. It's got the ice. And the tea. That's what makes and it iced ice. tea. Because if it just had ice, it'd just and be ice. ice. 
and the ice. It wouldn't be iced tea with just ice. It'd well, be sometimes just ice. there's just ice when you drink all the tea and there's only ice left. Now there's Chloe. You know my Chloe. <gasps> I love Chloe. Yeah, Bell. she. Chloe uh, Bell is adorable. She loves it when I drop a piece of ice out of the ice maker. Because she'll chase it for a week. <laughs> I mean, she loves to chase the oh, ice cubes. Oh, God, that's funny. She thinks that's a good game. Oh, goodness. Yeah. She took a trip. While I was at the um, quilt retreat, what? she went to St. Louis to see her other aunt. Oh. So, uh, and they have a pit bull. Mm. And that pit bull was not getting anything over on Chloe. That Chloe stood her ground with that pit bull, and it was pretty funny. Pretty funny. Mm. This side over here gets pretty hot. The fabric? Uh-huh. So you want to not pull as close? You might want to wear one of them oven gloves. Or like a silicone mitt? Uh-huh. Yeah, if your skin is tender, you might want to wear one of those uh, silicone mitts. Well, it is on the highest setting, it looks like. Yeah. Super hot. Yeah, super hot. Like scorching hot. Scorching hot. It's a lot of binding, Dawn. Well, I know. Look at You're all gonna that. You're going to be set. I know. Did we, did we sew all the strips together that we cut? I did. Oh, okay. I didn't need to. That was fast. You're going to have binding for but days. But I did. I know it. But I'd be here maybe a half an hour to an hour uh, pressing this binding if I didn't have this gizmo. Now, I don't like that, so I'm going to stop for a minute. See what I did? I got off. There's a, yeah, I see where it's. See, I got off on my folds. So I'm just uh -huh. going to, I did that on purpose. Yeah. So Everything that I can't could, be perfect. We gotta show well, you. Well, I gotta to, show you how to fix the problems. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And now you just set your iron back on there. I like how the iron has its own docking station. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, this uh, steamer thing? I bumped the ironing table and I have one that stands up. And oh, so yeah. I risk knocking the whole iron yeah. over. I've knocked it over several times. Well actually. this is a this is actually more than an iron. This is a steaming station. And the steam is not sitting in the iron. It is sitting in the station here. And so it's not um, ruining any of the filaments, uh, heating elements or anything in the iron because it's all in the station here. Also, it's not heavy. It's not heavy with water. So the iron is very light. Oh. Let me, can I see? Yeah, go ahead. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. It's a light iron. Won't wear you out. Still has enough weight, though, to put the crease in something if you want well, it. Well, yeah. You know. Well, and it's hot. Very hot. Because it's got iron in the name. Right. So. Well, I love how big that reservoir is because one of my other pet peeves is when I do need steam uh -huh. and I'm wanting to iron something big uh -huh. and, you know, use it for the whole day. I hate having to refill my iron, refill my iron, refill uh -huh. my iron. Yeah. Yeah. That looks like it holds a lot of water. Now look at all this binding we just got out of that little bitty piece of fabric. Man, we'll be able to bind all kinds of quilts today. Look at that. Now this is a good hint. Some people wrap it in a ring. Some people... Wrap it around a toilet paper tube. Can you just throw it in a paper sack? Uh, you could throw, throw it in a paper sack. You could uh, put it in a Ziploc bag. Uh, some people just put it on the floor as they start to bind. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw it on the floor. I'm going to find my end. I'm just going to throw it on the floor. Now, my floors are clean, of course, so that's always a good thing. Guess what I'm going to have to, uh, either the shop's going to have to buy that. I thought I could just use one, but it's discolored it a little bit. So maybe it'll come back. I don't know. But anyway, uh, some other things. Let me see. Well, I don't need to show any of those right this second. Where'd my quilt go? So now what I need is I need a walking foot because I've got some thickness under me here. So I'm going to change my foot, put my needle up, 
get my uh, screwdriver here. Lefty Lucy. Away. Righty tighty. Away. Okay. So I'm going to unscrew my foot here. Now some machines have a walking foot already built in. This one does not. So just put my walking foot in. If you don't know how to put your walking foot on, get your manual out. And it'll show you how to put your walking foot on. It's not hard to do. Now what is a walking foot? A walking foot, or some people call it an even feed foot. It's a foot that has its own set of feed dogs, and the feed dogs are on the top. Well, what are feed dogs? Feed dogs are these little claws that live inside your sewing machine that pulls the fabric so that when you're stitching and the needle makes contact with the bobbin thread and it hooks and comes back up, what makes the fabric advance? It's the feed dogs. And so, by having feed dogs on the top and the bottom, it helps all the thicknesses go through the machine at the same time. So, the top fabric's not lagging back because the bottom fabric's being pushed by the feed dogs, and the top fabric's just sitting still because there's no feed dogs on top. If you're just sewing with two pieces of fabric, it's no big deal because the bottom feed dogs and the pressure of your presser foot will allow both pieces to go through together. But now that we're sewing on a, a little bit of a thickness, then that really helps uh, with pushing all the fabrics through at the same time. One thing that I really like about what my quilter does, and I don't know if all quilters do this or not, but my quilter goes around my quilt after she's quilted it with an eighth of an inch. And so an eighth of an inch uh, uh, what's that? Basting stitch. Thank you. Basting stitch so that my, uh, these lay down perfectly flat. They're not rolling back. See? And that's really nice. Ask your quilter if she won't do that for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on a side. Now this is a square quilt, so it doesn't really matter. Okay? But if I am working on an elongated quilt, like the where the uh, top and bottom is shorter and the sides are longer, I'll start on the sides. Don't know why, just do. I leave about 12 inches of free fab, of free uh, bias tape or bias strip. And I'll start, well, here's about a third there's about a third, and here's about a third. So I'm gonna start about a third of the way down. I'm gonna lay my bias. Now, I always like to put the uh, tape on the top, uh, the bias strips on the top, the binding on the top. Some people like to put it on the back and then flip and let the um, stitching, the hand stitching be on the front. I don't do it that way. I prefer it the other way. So that's the way I, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna put that even, and I'm gonna bring my foot up. Slip that underneath. Now my uh, walking foot does not have a quarter inch mark. So I'm gonna to have to go here with my uh, quarter inch mark that I have on my tape. And again, this would be a good time to have another table here to hold the weight of your um, quilt so that it's not pulling against you. But we don't have that, so, okay. We'll deal with what we've got. Okay, so let me move that back so you can see what I'm doing. Can they see what I'm doing there, Peter? Uh -huh. I've got this piece of binding lined up right with the edge of my quilt. My quarter inch line is right underneath me, so I know I'm at a quarter of an inch. Put my foot down, hold that in place, 
put my needle down. And then I'm gonna take, where'd my yellow chalk pencil go? Mm. It oh, might here, be on the right board. Here, right here, chalk pencil. And I need a small ruler. I need a small ruler with a quarter inch increment. See, this one has that white line. I don't know. There, that white line right there, that's a quarter inch line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch right here. It doesn't matter what you use to mark it with because it's not going to show. But that's my stopping point right there. Okay? Right there, I'm going to stop right there. And that's a quarter inch from the edge that's of the quilt. That's a quarter inch from the edge of the quilt. Okay? Very nice. All right. So if your quilt's way long, you may not be able to do that until you get closer to your corner. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm stopping. Needle up, cut the thread. This is the most important thing to getting a quarter inch seam allowance. Please hold. Let me get into position. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So, okay, so do? I didn't stop at that point. So oh. you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to seam it. ripper. Yeah, just take out a few of those stitches. I couldn't see. So I'm just going to take out those few stitches okay then this is where my miter and I'm telling you this matters so much even if it looks pretty on the front it's got to be pretty on the back so in order to make it work this is the trick see this edge of the quilt right here mm -hmm. this has to be straight as it continues with the binding. This is my this is my um, insurance policy right here. I make sure now I can visualize it. If you can't, can you move your arm there? If you can't lay it on your machine and you know make sure that you've got a straight line that you can line it up with. But see how now that is going to be a perfect, and I mean perfect, 45-degree angle because it's straight there. And that gives you a perfect 45-degree angle. Now, once I've got that, then I'm going to fold it down straight with this edge. Straight. So it's straight here, and it's straight there. And underneath there is my perfect 45-degree angle, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around. I've got this in my hand. I'm not letting go of it. If you need to put a pin in there, you could. Get it up here, get it a quarter of an inch away from my machine, my needle. Okay. Sorry, I bumped you. Come on, little sew machine. Little engine that could. And I'm going to keep this edge and my binding. Now, if I wanted my binding to be a little bit deeper, I could use a deeper seam allowance, okay? But I want to make sure that this is an inch, this should be an inch and an eighth is what this should be. It's an inch for some reason. I must have only uh, cut this two inches. Oh, no, it stretched when I uh, did the ironing. So now it's only one inch. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, um, 
So now it's an inch. So a half an inch is halfway, but that doesn't give me any room for the actual part that bends over. It takes up a little bitty amount, okay? So I'm going in a quarter of an inch and I would want it to go down a quarter of an inch and that gives me about a quarter of an inch for me to lay it over. So what this means is when I pull this over to the back, my back is going to be, my back binding is going to be wider than my top binding. If you don't want that, then you've got to have your seam allowance be a little less than halfway. So my seam allowance should have been three eighths if I wanted it to be perfectly half and half. You see that? Okay, but I'm not going to worry about this. Again, this is not going in the state fair. This is going to go on an end table at my house. Do you think any of my friends that come over are going to measure? No, they're not. And if they do, they will not be coming over as my friends anymore. What will they be coming over as? Uh, enemies. <laughs> Probably friends oh, of my God. husband. Because right now, he's in the doghouse. Okay, now I'm getting, I'm getting to the end again, right? Can you see that I'm coming up to an end? I don't want to get too close because then I, I wouldn't have enough room for your ruler. For my ruler, so I'm going to mark this with my quarter inch again. What type of marking device do you use? I'm using a chalk pencil. Okay. You could use any if your fabric was light. You could use a regular pencil. This is not going to show. Oh, because it's going to get folded. Uh, it's going to be folded into the quilt. <clears throat> uh, so I wouldn't use a magic marker that would maybe seep all the way through all the, all the layers and go to the front. I wouldn't do that. Put a chalk pencil. Now I'm going to go slow now because I want to just land right on that. Uh, and this little machine, this is the Janome. What is this Janome called? It's the 4120 QDC. Has this little cutter. Oh, it's fantastic. I have some questions. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, when you're doing the stitching, um, what stitch length do you like to use for when you're doing binding? Well, when I'm doing binding, I just use whatever the machine comes up to. This machine happens to come up at 2.2. Okay, so okay. if you're doing a bed quilt and you're using regular loft, I know this one has a thin loft batting, but if right. you're doing regular loft, you just use whatever it comes I'd use, up as? Uh-huh, okay. yeah, I would, because um, that's going to be um, a, a stitch that's going to be durable. Okay enough durable. But if I'm working with miniatures, with my miniatures, I will lower the stitch length if I've got a little miniature one. Okay, now what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure this edge, see here's a nice edge on my sew machine, and I'm just going to make sure that that is straight across there, giving me a nice bias. I are you, mean, are you finger pressing that? I am kind of finger okay. pressing that. I kind of like to do that. Okay. And then I'm bringing that down so that that fold Continues that line. I'm going to turn this around. And again, there's nothing says I couldn't put a pin in it. You know how I love to pin? I could put a pin right here and it'd hold that together real nice as I was playing around. That's kind of a good idea. I like that idea. Why didn't I think of it a minute ago? Okay. Get that up in there. That pin out. Don't forget, you don't want to run over your pins. Do you, Peter? No. So I was sewing in a thunderstorm the other day. Peter. Now, if you've watched our other videos, you will know that Peter has not had his sew machine on a surge protector. And, and we've given him, we've given them raspberries ever since we found it out. And so, funny thing was, is like, oh. It's thundering. Oh, I don't have a surge protector, so I unplugged my machine and stopped sewing right. the, until the thunderstorm passed. That's right. Oh, my gosh. It's the funniest thing. Did you go out and get you one yet? No. Peter, 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 Peter. I'm, I'm going to probably regret it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he goes crying to his insurance company, I need a new sewing machine because the lightning struck my electricity and now my sewing machine doesn't work they'll say well did you have it on a surge protector no i didn't well you should have listened to dawn that's what the insurance company's gonna say okay i'm coming to an end again 
All right, I don't wait till I get right up to the end. I'm just gonna mark a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I want you to know that. This is the way I do it. It's not wrong, it's not right, it's just the way I do it. I've always done it this way. And you'll get to where you can visually see, you know, that this, this is a straight line right here. You won't have to measure, I mean, you won't have to use a straight edge because you'll just be able to, uh, to feel it and then get it right on the fold, and I mean right on the fold. I think I'll put a pin in it. That worked out so well before. As I turn it around, line it up with the edge, get it underneath my foot there. Are you starting on the very edge, or are you coming in any No, amount? I'm starting right on the very edge. Okay. I don't have to come in a quarter of an okay. inch. Now, the part that everybody wants to see is coming up here pretty soon is where you connect them. That part, I tell you what, every time I go do binding, that part gets me. Does it? But it doesn't anymore because I've done enough quilts that I got it memorized. Good. But before, oh, I could never remember. Okay, I'm coming up to the edge. Don't want to go too far onto the quilt, onto the edge before I mark it. I'm going to mark it. Just love this. I like putting on binding myself. I love it too. Don't mind it at all. I feel like to me putting on binding is like the victory lap. The creme de la creme, the finishing, the... It's the victory lap. It's the victory lap. Yep. That's a good way to put it. Because I did all that work uh -huh. and then now I just get to do a victory lap. And yeah, put, go lap the binding around the quilt. That's a really good way to put it. I like that. And then if I use a whole spool of, of thread in the process of making a quilt, then that's my... That's my, um, that your... what am I trying to say? My trophy. Your it's trophy. my little trophy. My little empty thread spool is my trophy. Do you save it? I do. What do you put it in? I your trophy it. case? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I need, a, I need a quilter's trophy case. You certainly do. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. And Look I leave. All these ribbons you're going to be wearing. I only leave, I only leave, um, one layer of thread on the spool so I know what color it was. So are you uh, going to be getting ribbons? Mm-hmm. Well, now how are you going to display your ribbons? I'm going to leave them on the projects. Oh, you are? Uh-huh. Okay. What if you wanted to use the project? Well, I can't now. Oh, okay. Alrighty, now I am on the same side as the side I started. So I'm only going to sew about a third of the way. So don't go all the way, right? No, don't go all the way. You'll be sorry. Get in trouble. Right. Okay. Now, here I've got a seam. See that? Okay. I want to kind of stay away from that. Stay away from the seam. Mm -hmm. So it's clear up here. Do I want to cut it off? I think I want to cut it off. So I'm going to go right to it. I'm going to cut that. It doesn't give me very much mm -mm. room, does it? To turn and burn it. It doesn't. Off. So you know what? I'm going to take out some of these stitches. Now the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to be near this seam right here. So I'm going to take out some of these stitches and back this up a little bit just to give me a little more room and you're going to see why here in a few minutes. Uh, why I need that little bit more room. I swear, I'm not going to rip the fabric. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to fold that back so that I'm not dealing with that seam. 
him, so I'm just folding it back on itself. Look at all that. <laughs> oh my gosh. It keeps going and going. Okay. Okay. So I folded it up so that they touch each other. They give each other a little kiss each end. You see that? Mm -hmm. How I have folded that right to that edge and folded that right to that edge. Then I measure. I measure the width of my strip. And like I said, this should have been a, a one and a quarter, but because I stretched it on that thing, it came out to be an inch. So what I do is from the folded edge, I go halfway. Now I go all the way. I go a whole inch. Whatever this measures, that's what I measure from the fold over. So if this measured one and a quarter, or one and an eighth, or one inch, or whatever this measures, this the width of this, that's what I measure and I mark. And then I do it to the other side, making sure that these two kiss each other. See that? I'm gonna make them right there. And then I'm gonna measure that, and I'm gonna measure an inch over. All right, and again, it doesn't matter what you mark that with because it's not going to show. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on that inside of that line. So I'm going to cut the line off. So see, the line is on the part that gets discarded, okay? And the same with this over here. That's the part. And I love to save these for beginners and enders. Okay. Now, this is where the tricky part comes in. Okay? In order for this to work, you have to put right sides together. And so the way that they're laying right now is they're folded and they're laying right sides together, but they're folded. Mm. You have to unfold them. Mm. So I'm going to unfold this one. Mm. Okay, set it aside, mm -hmm. and I'm going to unfold this one and set it aside. Now, I didn't come in enough, but that's not going to show because that's going to be in my seam allowance, I hope. Clipped off. Clipped off. Uh, and so now, see how they are? Mm -hmm. See like that? Yep. But I want to sew them on a diagonal, on the diagonal, and I want them right sides together. So what I'm going to do is, look at my hands, I'm going to pick this one up, and I'm going to take this one right to it. Okay. And I'm going to make them lay on top of each other, but this one is just coming up, this one is just laying on top. Not like this. Nope like this, across. And now I am going to use my pins. I'm going to use my pins. Making sure, now this is all very stretchy, so be very careful. And some people don't pin this back edge, but I do. I want that square to lay perfectly flat, okay? Nice and flat. Now I'm going to sew on the diagonal from this point to this point, but I can't really see this point right here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Can't see it? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my chalk pencil. I'm going to look at that, and I'm just going to make a little mark. 
to show me where that point is. All right. So I'm going to put that under my machine. Now, in order to do that and have it lay flat, I need all this flexibility in this quilt so that this will lay flat. So see why I needed all that space in between? Uh -huh. So that I can scrunch this up and I can get this to lay flat. Look at how flat that lays. I'm going to bring it over under my sewing machine here. Take that pin out. You could have drawn a whole line all the way down if you didn't have this tape with your needle marked on it. Here I'm coming to my pin. Take my pin out. <clears throat> and now I've sewed on the diagonal. Now, what some people do is they cut it before they see if it really works. So That's what bold. I do, <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is I make sure before I cut that off that it really is laying the way it's supposed to. And look at that, how that just lays seamlessly right on that. Now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to cut it a quarter of an inch away. Give me a seam allowance. And this is where I love my little finger iron mm -hmm. because I don't want to take this and put it in my sewing machine, in my uh, iron, because I don't want to uncrease this middle crease here. So I take my finger iron or my wooden iron and I give that a little finger press or a wooden iron press. I love this thing. This is called the buyannie.com tool. It is a stiletto and a finger press. It is awesome. I love it very, very much. And so then this puts this open so then that lays flatter. And remember that seam that was there? That's going to be inside. Nobody's going to see that. So now that all lays pretty nice and flat. I'm going to bring it back over to my machine. Put it underneath. And I'm going to back up a little bit and sew over some of these stitches that I've already sewn on. Okay? So that just locks those in place. Here we go. I'm going to make sure this stays on the edge of my quilt. Uh, my needle just fell out. How does that happen? <laughs> oh, geez. The, the vibrations of the walking foot probably unscrewed it you know because it wasn't screwed super tight i think i saying? might have unscrewed it oh by accident you bumped it when you went to put uh, the feed the put the other thing on i that might makes have sense unscrewed it yeah I so can't... while you're doing that i got good news what i i acquired my very first pin cushion well did you bring it to show and tell no i didn't bring it to show and tell but I made it. I made it. You made the pin cushion? I made it. Oh, I'm so impressed. I'm so happy. Oh, oh you should be. You know how I feel about pin cushions. You might have to make me right, one for right my there. birthday. Put it right there. Thank you. Little bar. Yeah, I love that pin cushion. Okay. Here we go. I'm not going to back that out. Oh, you got to put your foot down. Put your foot down. Is that where that expression came from? Uh-huh. I guess. I don't know. I've been singing that Justin Timberlake song. Put that sunshine in, Got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I love that song. I don't even know what it is, but I like it. All those crazy dancers. It's so fun. Got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. That's the only words I know. <laughs> well, you know, songs from the 80s, they would just sing the same verse over and over and over. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, now I'm coming up to where I started. Whoa. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on. And I'll just sew right over. So do you and then I'm going to back up a little bit. 
just do a couple back stitches and then look at that, I'm done. What? Yeah. You just did binding on the whole thing? I bought, just bound this whole quilt. That's amazing. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut off any of the corners. What do you mean? We're going to cut off the corners. You're cutting corners? See where there's this... Uh, the thread. You're not the cutting thread. the corner of the oh, no, quilt. We're not You're cutting, cutting the, the thread. No, we're not cutting the corners. Okay. We're just cutting the threads. I thought we were cutting corners. No, we're not cutting corners. We're just cutting the threads. Okay, now we've got those all cut. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you some things. Oh, I just love this. There's a tiny text I got a tiny text tiny message. Tiny I got to check and see all my dad. Nope, it's not my dad. Okay. So here's some things. What's all this? This is what I keep. I bet you can't tell what's in here. Um, binding supplies. Is it for like book binding? No, it is, is actually it for, your for side quilt. Hustle? I should have put quilt <laughs> binding. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, now, I've got this cute little tin that I just love so much, and it holds everything I need. But you could get you a little pouch, too. You could make yourself a little pouch. We have these, and they're in... They're in the clearance, and we only have a couple left, so you might want to come in and get that. But inside my binding supplies, my little binding supplies, I have these hooks. We have these. They are so nice. I should have brought out the box so you could see what they look like. They come in all sizes, but these are super terrific for binding. Then I have this Thread Magic. Now, Thread Magic is just simply a conditioner for your thread. It makes your thread stronger. Uh, it makes it glide through. Since we're going to be using a longer length of thread, because uh, we don't want to keep stopping and starting, stopping and starting, uh, we're going to use Thread Magic on our thread. Our needle, uh, I found these embroidery needles. I uh, also like the um, Primitive Gatherings binding needles. We're going to get some of these in. We don't have them in. I just introduced them to the shop. They're Primitive Gatherings binding needles. And let me just show you what one looks like. What do you look for in a needle that you want to put binding on? What you want... Can you lay it back down for a second? What you want is a needle that doesn't have a big bulging eye. Like the eye doesn't bulge out like that and get fatter and then the shaft of the needle is thinner. You want a needle that's pretty much the same size until it gets to the tip. I like a longer needle because I like to take more than one stitch and you'll see when I start. Uh, so. But these, I looked at these. This has a little bit bigger eye than the than the Primitive Gatherings one. You can kind of see the eye of that one is a little, a little bit smaller than this one. Uh, so the thread would not come out as easy on uh, the Primitive Gatherings one. But these are just as good. Uh, Peacemakers makes a really good sturdy needle. Also, if you can't find this Thread Magic, which we do have here in stock, we also have Beeswax, which does the same job as what that does. Also, I use two thimbles. I use a thumb thimble and a finger thimble, and I'll show you that. Show us what you're working with. The first thing I do... Mm -hmm. Here's my thread, comes right off my spool. And I always, always, always thread my needle off of my spool. I never cut my thread and then thread it because thread has a nap. Are you not that are you kind of nap. Are you dealing with some sleepy thread over there? Not, not that kind of nap. <laughs> the sleepy thread. The thread lies in a different direction going one way than it does another direction. You want to go with the nap of the thread. It is wound on the bobbin, I mean on the spool, with the nap going the correct way. So if I always thread from the end that is, sorry, the end that is off the spool, I know I will always be going with the nap the correct way. So there's my thread. I'm going to use a pretty long thread, maybe about a yard long. Dang, you're brave. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to put a knot in it. How do you not get it all tangled up? I'm going to show you. I'm going to put I'm a jealous. knot in it. I'm jealous I just right use now. a quilter's knot. We'll go. We'll I'm make, so jealous. You should uh, look up quilter's knots on the how internet. You, They're how so. You gonna, how are you going to make this work with that long a thread? Uh huh. So I've got my uh, thread conditioner. Where is it? Oh, it's back here. Let me take my thread conditioner. I got to see this. You lay your thread conditioner right in the thread conditioner. See that? Uh -huh. Then you just take your finger uh -huh. and pull your thread through. And that will keep it from tangling. I promise it will. I don't gonna, believe it. Okay, don't. don't. I don't care whether you believe me or not. Try it I gotta and then see you'll it. believe it. No, I just got to see, oh, okay. see you stitch and not okay. get it twisted. Okay. Do those work, though, for real? These thumb things? This is more of a grabber. Okay. Okay. Because I... Used to when I didn't do it, and I mean, I bind a lot. Yeah. I would get a groove in my thumb, and uh -huh. it would be so sore by the time... Oh, God. Because, look at my thumbs. Because, see, I kind of hold my, my needle right against my thumb there. Does your thumb not hurt after a while? Uh-uh. It doesn't? Well, my but I thumb... Think, I don't know. It must... I don't know. My thumb. I use hurts. a I use a beading needle, so it's like super thin. For yeah, my binding. isn't it flimsy? Does it bend? Uh uh. Really? Okay. So now I'm all set. I've got my thumb needle on. I've got my uh, finger needle on. Now this is up to you. This is all a personal preference. I have mm -hmm. to have this. This is the way I'm used to it. If you're not used to wearing a thimble and you'd like to get to know a thimble, find a thimble that's comfortable. And wear it all day long. Mm -hmm. Wear yeah. it all the. You might want to take it off when you go to the bathroom. Oh, that would be. Yeah. yeah. You don't want it going down the toilet. No. But all day long, do your chores. I mean, don't do the dishes with it and all that. But just, you know, whatever you're doing. See, I, and you don't want one that just flies off. Look at that. So you don't want it to fly off. If it's a little bit flimsy, you can put a Band-Aid around your finger and then put it over the Band-Aid. Oh, and it'll, that's a good It'll tip. keep it from falling off. But I love this uh, thimble. It's called the Comfort Thimble. It comes in all sizes, extra small to extra large. Now, where'd you get that uh, one? Here at the shop. Okay. Here at Always in Stitches. I haven't seen that one. Uh, there's seven, nine, well, I had them order the men's special because it's oh, the brand I use. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah, pull. Yeah, I've got, got pull. a little pull around yeah, here. Yeah, pull. And so there's millions of kind of thimbles. And literally, I probably have, I would say, at least 75 to 80 thimbles that I have tried. Now, I believe Over it. the years. I believe it. Yeah. Because if I look at your uh, scissor holder over yeah, there. Yeah, you know how many scissors, yeah. so you know how many thimbles yeah. I've got. So, I have tried pretty much, I mean, I have paid over $100 for a thimble that just I knew was going to work, and it just didn't. It didn't work for me, so now it's a collector's item. <laughs> but anyway, this one for uh, seven ninety nine is the one I use. And I have different sized ones because my fingers in the winter are smaller than they are in the sun. No, it's the other way around. Is it the other way around? Some are bigger. Some are is bigger because they swell up. Heat. Winter... It, they get smaller because of the uh, no cold. Because of the cold, yeah. Yep, cold. So I get several sizes that fit me. And sometimes, you know, one fits and then sometimes the other one fits. So I just find one that's not going to fall off. And sometimes during the day, my even my th fingers, if they're swollen. You know, if you walk around your like this you a lot, your fingers something. will get swollen. Yeah. Yes. So you'll have to use a different one. Or if I eat, you know, mm -hmm. some fettuccine Alfredo. Mm -hmm, whatever. Very salty. Right, salty. Okay, so now I'm getting ready. The part I've been waiting the for. The part that everybody's been waiting for. i got to get my... Um... Now, some people take this, mm -hmm. and they do it all the way around. Ooh, that's a lot of clips. Yeah, that's a lot of clips. So I don't that's do it. That's a lot of clips that... to keep track of. That's a lot of clips. I don't do that. Are you a one-clip girl? Are you a one-clip wonder? I'm a one-clip wonder. Get my pin cushion over here. What I'm going to do. <clears throat> now I go from right to left. Okay. So I'm going to fold my fabric. I'm going to fold my bias. And you can see that I'm, I'm more than halfway. But here's my seam that is holding the front of my binding on. So I at least want to cover that up. 
So I'm going to bring that down so that that covers that up and I'm going to put my clip on. And I'm going to start back here away from my clip. Let me get it in my lap just so, okay? I'm going to take my thread and my needle and I'm going to come in back here and I'm going to come in between. I'm going to come right in through my uh, sandwich and I'm going to go right below a couple stitches, right below that seam line. My seam line is right there. See it? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go a couple stitches right below that. And I'm going to hide my knot right in my binding. I mean, my batting. Did you see that? It just went right in my batting. Not ever to be you, seen again. You put that knot to sleep. I did. I did. Now I'm going to bring this over. And I'm just going to kind of finger press that to the back. Now, I know some people that will go ahead and press no. all this first. No, no, don't Why do not? That. Don't. Oh, I think if you're going to take the time to hand stitch binding, uh -huh. it needs to look like it just rolled on rolled its own. On. Okay. Like it's just rolling over. All right. Well, some people like oh, to do that. It hurts my feelings. Does it hurt it? My okay. feeler, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to with my hand. Because then it just flattens it out. Mm-hmm. So there. Takes the dimension right away. And see where my thread comes out of my back of my quilt? I'm going to go right into the fold of my binding strip. And this is called a blind hem. Now, if I come out there and I go right into the back of my quilt and just take a bite of this fabric, don't take a bite all the way through to the front. Just take a bite of this back fabric. See how I have, now I have a bite of my binding, a bite of my fabric, and I'm going to go up and take another bite of my binding, another bite of my quilt, another bite of my binding, and I'm going to pull, and I'm pushing with my thimble, and this is where this comes in handy because now it uses as a gripper to pull that thread. See how that worked? Now I can move my clip. Again, I'm gonna fold that with my finger. I'm gonna bite right where that comes off my binding. See that? Right there, right directly below that, I'm gonna bite my quilt, bite into the fold of that binding. Bite my quilt, come up and bite the binding. This is why I like to have a longer needle. Because if I had a real short needle, I would not be able to stack these stitches onto my needle. And I'm pushing with that thimble. My mom's fingers had thick, thick calluses on them. All of her fingers had thick, thick calluses, except for these two. She didn't quilt with these two. Okay? So. Keep your tension good. Bite through the back of the quilt, through the binding, through the back, through the binding. Some people call this a ladder stitch. I call it a blind hem stitch. Some people whip stitch. Now, if you whip stitch, you'll be able to see your stitches. If you blind hem or ladder stitch, look, there are no stitches to be seen. Look, I'm using light thread. Did you notice? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what color thread I use because you're never going to see the thread. Okay. I'm going to take my clip off. I'm going to make sure that this is straight. This is straight all the way across. I'm going to pull this thread so it's nice and taut. Bite of quilt. Bite of binding. Bite of quilt. Bite of binding.
bite of quilt, bite of binding. Now see, I've got some threads, and I'm just gonna tuck them under there. I could cut them, but heck, I'm just gonna not take the time. I'm just gonna tuck them under there. Bite of binding, I mean bite of quilt, bite of binding. Now look, I've come to the seam of the next row, I mean of the next side. So see, here's where the, the row of stitches that is holding this front binding on, there's the row of stitches. So I make sure I take a bite right there And then I go into the fold right there at that stitch and I come up and take a little small bite. And I am going to do a setting stitch or a securing stitch by taking a little bite of the backing of the quilt and a little bite of the binding. And I'm doing it on the top because nobody will ever see this. And I'm gonna do that about two or three times. I'm just gonna take a little secure stitch. You can also make a knot if you wanna take it through the loop. See how that becomes a little knot right there? I just wanna secure that right there like that. Okay, all right. Now I'm ready to do my mitered corner. And because my fabric laid straight across there, when I fold this down, it should just automatically lay right in place. Is that magic? Magic. Magic. But look at where my thread is. It's clear up here and not down here, okay? That's good. We like that. Because if it were down here, if it was out of place, it would show or pull oh. the fabric towards it. So in order for us to be in control of where it lands, we are now going to come through that fold right down to that corner. And now look, we are in control of hiding that right in the exact spot it needs to go in. And I'm just gonna take an itty bitty little stitch right there. And look at that, you'll never see that. Now, some people like to stitch this part closed. And if you do, that's go for it. I don't unless it's a bed quilt. If it's a quilt that's going to get a lot of use, uh, I will do it. But for this little wall hanging or this little end table thing, I'm not going to do it. And look at how perfect that lies, how nice it looks on the front. I'm going to get my clip back out. I'm going to lay this down. Get my clip. See, it'd be so much more easier if I just let the table hold the weight of the quilt instead of trying to put it on my lap. Bite of the quilt. Bite of the binding. Bite of the quilt. Bite of the binding. The stitches don't have to be that small. They're about an eighth of an inch. But look at that. Perfectly uh, nice and tidy. I'm not saying it's a perfect uh, corner, but I'm saying it's nice and tidy and it's good enough for me. And it's my quilt, so that's what counts, right? Mm-hmm. little bite. Now I'm not going to do this whole thing. Do you want to see another corner? I'm going to show you how to tie off, okay? okay. Alrighty. So if I have run out of thread and I want to make and I want to uh, tie off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 
uh, into the back of the quilt. And I'm going to go into, in between, and I'm going to come up here. I'm coming in between the sandwich. You can't see it on the front. Ooh, you kind of can. I better get that off of there. Okay. Get between the sandwich. There you go. That's a piece of thread that I gotta get out of there. So I'm in between my sandwich. And I'm gonna pull that so that my threads are nice and tight right there and you can't see them. And I'm gonna put my clip right there to hold that in place. But I can still un, uh, fold it back. And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna secure it into the seam allowance what I like to do is I like to go through the loop twice and make a secure knot and then I kind of fish it between the layers And cut it with a little bit of a tail like that okay and that's and then when I'm ready to start another one when I'm ready to start again not the end of my thread my thread is under my needle I just twist about four times I put my finger and thumb over those twists and I just pull the thread through those twists and that gives me a nice little knot at the end of my thread. So if I wanna start again, I would just do it at like, just exactly like I did at the beginning. I would sandwich it between the quilt. I would come up right underneath, a few stitches underneath that seam. Uh, that those stitches and I could start again and that's what how that's how I would end so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start again again with the stitches coming up just below the stitches that is holding my binding on pulling all that taunt to the front turning that over I'm going to get my clip. Anytime a clip can help you, use it, right? Right, Peter? Exactly. Use these clips. These clips are the bee's knees until they go flying. Flying clips! Clips with wings. Clip those wings. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, I'm I'm in the back of the quilt right now. Come up in the back of the quilt. I'm going to come up into the fold of the binding. Take a bite. Go down, take a bite of the quilt. Got to make sure that that stays. I'm going to put a clip there too. You know, we used to have to use pins and we'd get poked. But with these clips, I just don't know how I would do without these clips. I, I made vinyl um, project bags this weekend. And of course, you can't put pins through that vinyl. I was using clips for everything. That's so nice. Okay. Did you see how the needle was really tight in there? And I, my gripper really helped me with gripping the... Uh, needle yeah. and pulling it through that was really nice so having that gripper on my thumb it's really not a thimble on my thumb it's a gripper yeah you gotta have a gripper if you're if you're doing stacking the needle like that right that really helps pulling it out right so right here now right here I've come up right where the seam for the next side goes so I'm right there I'm going to go down into and get a bite of my quilt, and I'm going to come up into my binding. 
And now way up here in the middle of my seam, I'm going to take a little secure stitch or two. One little knot. Two little knots. Nice little secure stitch, okay? Now I've just laid my thread and my needle to the side. I'm gonna take my other side of my binding and I'm just gonna lay it back and it should just come right down and magically fold right where it should land. See that? Take this. And clip it right in place. Now where does my thread come out at? Well, it doesn't come out at this point because remember I secured it way back up in here. See, I've secured it way there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull, push my needle, my thread, right through that little fold and come out on the point and place that point right where it's supposed to go. That way I'm in control. I'm gonna take a baby bite out of my back, out of my uh, quilt, and then go up and get an itty bitty bite out of my binding. And then start again. Start again with my stitch. Take a bite of binding, a bite of the back of the quilt. Put the clip on. Let it help you. And then bite of the backing, bite of the binding. Bite of the backing, bite of the binding. Every so often you might want to look and make sure that you're not coming through especially if you're using a high contrast thread. And look at that corner. Isn't that nice? Do you feel good about that? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is perfect. And yeah, it'll do it see, that way. You can't see any You dimples. can't see any There's stitches. No, no it There's just no lays thread. perfectly nice. It looks like it's floating. Floating binding. Mm -hmm. I love it. Isn't that nice? So that's the way I do it. Those are all the steps of binding. I don't know how long it took us to do that. But now you can rewind this and stop it, pause it, whatever to catch up. But now you can bind it. Simple, easy binding. How to do it. Uh, my way is not the only way again. There's many, many uh, videos out there on how to do binding. This is just the way I do it. I wanted to share it with you. So next time we meet at the sew machine, we'll be doing something different and exciting. So meet us back here next Monday. See you then. Bye.